Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White, and in this episode, we're going to take our first look at Adobe Muse 2.0. That's right, it hasn't even been a year yet, and it's already the first major update of Adobe Muse, which is the benefit of having a subscription product. We can update it as quickly as it's ready. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the enhancements. Well, first of all, let me tell you some of the enhancements that are under the hood. Um, as you would expect, code optimizations, making things more streamlined, reducing the amount of HTML code that it writes in some cases, as well as taking advantage of things like gradients and shadows instead of making those images using CSS. There's also Japanese language support. So those are kind of the things that you really won't necessarily see, unless you're Japanese. Um, but of course, they're under the hood and will make your life better. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the enhancements that you will see. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got a Muse site open here. And again, we're just covering the things that are new. So this is not a how to use Muse. I'm going to go ahead and open up my home page and we're going to do two things here. Uh, one of the things I mentioned kind of under the hood, but just want to show you how to do it. And that is the ability to have a browser fill um, in this case that is not just a solid. Like we normally work with a solid or an image. Now we have the choice of a gradient. And of course, when we choose that gradient now, the, the benefit here is that that gradient is now going to be generated as CSS code as opposed to images in the background. So that's just going to streamline your code and of course uh, doing the right things across browsers that will support this uh, CSS. So that's one benefit right off the bat. But there is, I'm going to bring up my, my second one, which is actually my favorite new feature inside Muse. And it actually has to do with one of our other products, which is Adobe Edge, which is currently in beta. Edge is our animation tool for creating HTML5 compliant animations. So let's go ahead and hop over to Adobe Edge. And in Adobe Edge, we've got this uh, animation kind of already built and it kind of zooms in and then you see the little taxi cabs go across the streets there. And this is all built in Edge, no flash, it's HTML5 compliant. Now, of course, I have the ability to export this out as HTML as I always did. But uh, if we go to our publish settings here, there's the web publish, of course, which is what you would put on your website. But we also included an InDesign for DPS type export. For people that are making digital publications, they would be able to export these animations and use them in their publications to animate their digital documents. And of course, um, even for iBooks and OS X. But it's this particular one that's uh, specific now also to Muse. So I expect them to update the menu to actually say InDesign DPS slash Muse. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tell it where to export. So I told it to export it in the same folder or new folder inside my Muse folder. And um, we're just going to call it design. And for the poster image, this is the actual image that you'll see on the page inside Muse. We're just going to tell it to use one of the images that were placed, as, which is like the composite image here. So we'll save our publish settings. We could have actually published from there too, but we're just going to go ahead and say publish. And when I say publish, that will go ahead and export out the web version and the uh, DPS slash now Muse version. So we head back over to Muse and we just now place that animation just like we would any other graphic. So here's the edge export that I just did and the design file that I told it to export. I go to place and I get a placement gun just like before with any other graphic. And I can zoom out, move that animation around, put it wherever I want on the page. And of course, we want to see it. So let's go ahead and preview this page in the browser. So that will open up my default browser. And then that will show me uh, this animation. And this animation is multifaceted. It's not just an animation on the page, but it's actually several animations uh, put together as different menus or things that a person can swipe through. So uh, each one shows the different HTML5 compliant animations that will work, of course, across your desktops and all modern mobile devices, including your iPad and your iPhone. So great to have now an easy way to get your animations from Edge directly into your Muse site. All right, let's head back over to uh, Muse. Let's go ahead and take a look at our next enhancement in 2.0. And this one is actually one of, 
you know, Edge, Edge is great, but this is the one that really drove me crazy that Muse didn't have. Now, Muse has always had the ability to do smart guides, kind of lining things up on each other. But what people really, really wanted, included myself, um, is the ability to have real guides. You know, not just the uh, column guides, not just the page guide, but being able to drag out a ruler guide wherever you want it. And of course, horizontal and vertical guides, as you would expect, to be able to line things up on those guides and snap to those guides. So, uh, it's here. We finally have guides inside Muse. And of course, you can, uh, let's see if I can do it here, you can group select your guides just like an Illustrator and InDesign and move your guides around and even delete them when you're done with them. So, um, ruler guides, yay, 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 finally here in uh, Adobe Muse. Now, I have a bunch of graphics here that I kind of want to align as well, but I don't want to take the time to do them one by one uh, with the ruler guides. So what I'm going to do is just select all of these. And as you would expect, the other big thing, uh, an alignment and distribute panel, finally. So let's go ahead and just simply say align those to the tops and we'll distribute the space evenly between them. And there you are. So quickly and easily, the kind of alignment functions you're used to in uh, Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop, and of course we can choose to align on a specific object or selection or the content area of the page. So big kudos to the Muse team for getting alignment right inside Muse. Get letting me do it with guides, smart guides, or the ability to have an align and distribute panel like I have in the rest of my Adobe applications. All right, moving right along. Now let's go ahead and take a look at one of the things that people have requested, probably as much as alignment. And we're gonna do a few things on this page. Um, the big one here is the ability to have forms. So we added a new uh, component, new widget here called forms, and you can now drag out a detailed contact form or simple contact form, and you can customize either one. And of course, the detail one asks for more information, the simple one asks for less information. But I do want to point out that if you use either one of these forms, uh, since the form data has to be routed and sent to you, it it's done via our Business Catalyst hosting, which comes with your subscription. So um, if you're going to use a contact form, just note that your site has to be uh, published with us. Now, uh, we're going to get into some publishing options in a moment here, but I just want to just point that out, that unfortunately the forms are tied to Business Catalyst. All right, so with that, I just drug out a simple form. It's got it's asking for your name, your email address, and a brief message. You can customize any one of these headings, which are kind of dim on this dark background here, but you can customize any of the headings you want, change the fonts, and you can even go in and, here, let's go out here. And we can customize and add more fields. So for example, this one only asks for name, email, and, and, um, and uh, a message. We can say that I wanna add my company name as well. And I wanna add uh, maybe a work phone number to request. And you can even add your own custom fields. So if you say, hey, there, you know, none of these are what I want. I wanna go ahead and put in uh, or look for a, or request a piece of information that I want. Specifically, you can add as many custom ones as you want. And of course, here is where you also put in the email address where the form will be, or form data will be sent to. So I'm gonna say uh, terry at mail.com. And that's where this form data will go back to. So it doesn't have to be the email address associated with your business catalyst account. If you're doing a site for someone else, that email can go to whoever that person is. And also, um, even though it added these, you know, after the fact, you can rearrange their order uh, simply by dragging and dropping wherever you want them to be. So you can change how this form is laid out. And again, just about every attribute of it, including on a field by field basis, you can choose whether or not the information is required, um, show prompt uh, text when empty, so forth and so on. So you can uh, customize any one of these the way you want. And again, it's a form ready to be submitted once you publish the site. Now, I also just wanna show a couple of quick things here that um, I may have forgotten to show. That's why I kind of left some placeholders here for me to remind me. And that's number one, notice the contact us is, you know, yellow, it's different, looks different than the rest of the type on the page. And of course, we've always had style sheets inside Muse. 
but now you can drag and drop those styles to customize uh, objects and text uh, on your page just by simply dragging the style onto the object or the frame that you're trying to customize. So drag and drop styles, kind of a nice addition. Now you'll notice that there's a, a graphic here that looks like a PDF uh, document, PDF icon. And here's another big one that people requested, and that's the ability to hyperlink to other types of files. In other words, instead of me hyperlinking just to another page or a URL, I want people to be able to download the brochure for this customer. So let's go ahead and instead of uh, entering a link or linking to a page, we can actually say link to a file, which I already did it previously, but let's just go through the process. Link to a file, go out, find your file and select it. And it will of course create the link to it, which you can go in and start customizing how that link's gonna behave. So I wanna open it up in a new window or tab and I want the tool tip to say brochure. Okay, and what will happen is when you publish or upload the site, it will also upload that PDF file and make it a part of the site as well. So any external links that you have to files, the files themselves get uploaded with the rest of the site. So contact forms, asset upload, drag and drop, um, drag and drop styles. So I hope you're starting to see that this is kind of a really big release, kind of a big deal. All right, and speaking of being a big deal, let's get to the last thing in this, vi in this video and this update. Now there are lots of little enhancements to the panels and things like that that I won't have time to go over that you'll just discover and learn. But here is probably yet the biggest thing people ask for, and that is we've always had the ability to publish the site to Business Catalyst, your hosting with Adobe. And of course, we've always had the ability to export the site as HTML, so you can take it and do whatever you wanna do with it. Use it on another hosting provider, uh, open the HTML up and do something with it if you want. But one thing people have always said is, well, I just wanna FTP it. I just wanna upload it to my own hosting provider where I have my own domain already set up. And we heard you. You can now upload directly via FTP right inside Muse. So if you say upload to FTP host, you can configure all your information the way you got it from your hosting provider. And you can even say only upload the modified files or the entire site. So this is just like Business Catalyst from the standpoint of when you make changes, it doesn't have to now upload the whole site or export the whole site. Uh, just like Business Catalyst, it will only update or upload and update the modified files. So I hope you get something out of this update that we did, which again, big update for Muse in a relatively amount, short amount of time, providing customers with many of the requested features that they had asked for and making it that much easier for designers now to continue to build sites without having to write the HTML code to go with it. That's it for this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Thanks for watching.